Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Spirit of Justice, where last episode we started our trial with Rafa unable to summon the spirit of her deceased father, collapsing, overwhelmed, with Prosecutor Garan leading the prosecution's case, all dressed up nice and evilly, instead it was Dirk that was trotted out as our first testimony, not that one of a dead man, one of a different kind of dead men when you can think about it. His statements currently? are kind of empty, so we press to try and get ourselves some more info. Like the possibility of a third party being there and the tomb is probably non-existent, which is something we didn't want him to admit. Hold it. We can't prove you innocent without at least the possibility that a third party was there. Find the possible and the impossible, son. That's just what a lawyer's gotta do sometimes. Isn't that right? Right. Who, me? Uh, yeah, you could say that. I see more than my fair share of trials like that. They start with no viable evidence, useful testimony, or any hope of winning. But through cold sweat, desperation, and a little luck, I always managed to pull them off. Right. I can see we are kindred spirits, you and I. Ha 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 ha! Jeez, taking cases like that must have shaved years off your life. <laughs> if that were true, I'd be long dead. Find the possible and the impossible. Can I prove that it was at least possible that there was a third party there? Dad, what did you see at the scene of the crime? Let's see, I came to... And lying right in front of me was Inga, dead as a doornail. Hold it. You stated that he was as dead as a doornail. How can you be so sure? It's pretty easy to spot the difference between a soulless man and the soulless shell of a man. His complexion and the amount of blood at the sea made it obvious which it was. Hmm. Watch your words, or you should join Mr. Inga much sooner than expected. You can bow your head before him and seek his forgiveness there in the Twilight Realm. If you still have a head to bow, that is. You bloodthirsty spider. What happened to you? There was still a little love in your heart 23 years ago. You even used to think of me as a brother. It seems you truly do have a death wish. Ha 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 ha! Is that really all you've got? Dirk, I'm begging you, enough of the lip. Just deliver your testimony, please. Alright, alright. I'll try, but I can't promise anything. <sighs> I've no recollection of what happened in the interim. A day's passed since the murder. Haven't you remembered anything in that time? My memory is a complete blank. It's as if that part of my brain has been scooped right out. How very convenient. But even if you've no memory of the event, your guilt is without question. There is nothing more to debate. If we're getting one finger on, I have no motive. You lead a band of insurgents that seeks to overthrow the government. I would say that alone is motive enough to slay our kingdom's minister of justice. I've declared countless times that I lead a bloodless revolution. I forbid violence and murder, even if some younger members may have a thirst for blood. A bloodless revolution? You wouldn't really have a motive in that case. They had a lot of weapons stored. Is that an important statement? Uh, I guess it is, yes. I'm gonna paint it that way after all. That was an important statement. I'd like my client to add it to his testimony. Very well then. The accused will please do the defense as requested. I don't have a motive for killing Inga. After all, me and my ilk seek a bloodless revolution. A bloodless revolution? Could you be more specific? I'm talking about dragging this pompous prosecutor here off her bloody throne. So go ahead, Garan. Act to a high and mighty now because it's the last chance you'll get. You still speak of rebellion despite the charges against you. You truly are a fool. I will prove your guilt soon enough and display your head for all of Kulayin to see. People will forever speak of you, not as a revolutionary, but as the terrorist you are. You're mistaken, your malefic your maleficence, not malevolence this time. It will be you the people will speak of. She does have a whole maleficent 
kind of look about her, doesn't she? As the tyrant who was overthrown by her own people. I wonder if you will still be spewing such nonsense before the headsman's axe. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll still be like this in the afterlife, despot. I know that self-restraint is as foreign as apple pie to Dirk, but I'd really rather go home than to the Twilight Realm after without all this. Yes, please, don't. Stop it. Stop taunting the witch. But I didn't kill him. At least I don't think I did. It'll go against everything I believe in. Oh, I'm supposed to press that. If only we could establish the possibility of a third party. But does the possibility itself even exist? We didn't have a choice. Proving it exists is the only way to start a real dialogue here. I've got to press it to make sure that... It's not a press all kind of thing. And it might have something to present to. We've got one statement added after all, so that's the statement of interest. Hold it! Can you state that you didn't kill him more definitively? How can I, when I have no memory of what happened? Well, can you at least state whether or not you were a murderer? That I can do. I'm not a murderer, and I would never kill anyone, no matter the circumstances. Objection! And do you have any evidence to support your claim that you did not kill the minister? Evidence? No. Can't say I do. In that case... You will strike the statement that I didn't kill him from your testimony. Wait, you can't just discard testimony like that. I mean, I'm the one cross-examining the defendant and all. Hold your prattling tongue, foreign devil. I am the queen of this kingdom. And the queen is the law. As such, I need not follow the laws that are in place. I can make and break them at will. And forth. The accused will refrain from stating I didn't kill him. What? Sure, whatever. It's the Grand Show after all, same as always. Though I guess there's no evidence that proves I didn't kill him either. Ah, okay. So we've changed this statement. Shall I press again then? There's statement, there's evidence that might link to there being someone else around. Let's press first. Dirk, leave the evidence finding to me. Now please, will you stop agreeing with everything the prosecution says? Alright, I'll stick to the facts from now on. But remember, son, if you truly believe in me, you should be able to prove my innocence. I know you can do it. He believes I'll prove him innocent. Even with all these inconvenient truths. Is that what he's saying? I think Dirk might be on something. Even the most disadvantageous facts may point the way to the truth. So don't ignore them. Think of them as food for thought. Don't worry, I know. The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. I need to remember that, no matter how difficult the facts may be to deal with. If only we could establish the possibility of a third party. But does the possibility itself even exist? Have we repeated this? We never choice. Proving it exists is the only way to start a real dialogue here. Alright, we know what we're aiming for then. Is it on this statement? Because it's mentioning evidence entirely? It's an altered statement after all. So when we're looking at things to prove that there was someone probably else there, or to point out some other things... None of this we want. It's this, an unidentified bloodstain from Mara's tomb. It was already wiped up and does not belong to the victim. There was someone else bleeding there that day. Objection! No, I'm wrong. Damn it! A statement contradicts with this piece of evidence. Hmm. Such items are unworthy of my eyes. Hmm. Well, if Eminem said so, then I suppose there's no point in wasting time on it. Ah! That's the one that mentioned evidence. Okay, it's got to be a previous statement then. Come on, I don't deserve at least a cursory glance. Come on, that's got to be the correct evidence at this point in time. Okay, no evidence of the proof that didn't kill him either. So I tried to present evidence to that statement that said there was maybe something else in the room. Maybe something else going on. Motive, bloodless resolution. Well, that mentions blood too. Oh, there we go. Possibility of a third party being there in the tomb is probably non-existent. 
adds the mysterious blood. Because that's how we know that we say that there was someone else there. Injection. Not the seventh statement. The eminence, I'm afraid this trial will not go exactly as you anticipated. Because I can show how there might have been a third party in that tomb. Oh, how very fascinating. Go on, I do so love a good fairy tale. We did a luminol test of the crime scene. And we found a blood stain that didn't match the Justice Minister's blood. I'll remind you that neither Dirk nor Miss Faye were injured during the incident. The thing is, this blood stain we found had been wiped up by someone. What is this? But, but, but who would have done such a thing? That's the big question, isn't it? Who wiped up the blood and why? Thinking about it logically, it must be someone who wanted to conceal their presence at the scene of the crime. Oh, and to whom do you suppose the bloodstain might belong? The bloodstain belongs to uh, Amara, the real killer, the victim. Well, we're gonna go the real killer. It's the vague enough statement. The bloodstain belongs to the real killer, of course. Whoever it was, they were probably shot while they were attacking Minister Inga. And since their blood would give them away, they had to wipe it up. That's very true, actually. I say this because we know for a fact that the Justice Minister fired his gun in the tomb. You have the memory of a flea. There was nowhere for anyone to hide. This too is a known fact. Objection! But a blood stain from a third party means there must have been someone hiding there. Very well then. Tell me this. Where was this third party hiding? Oh, um... The crime scene was thoroughly searched after it was discovered. So if there was a hiding place, it would have to be someone no one would dare look. Someone no one would dare look. Hmm. Let's have your answer to vent. And now, where could a third party have hidden? The only place no one would dare look. Take that! There's one place no one would search, not even the Queen's Royal Guard, and one place we couldn't get into to look. And that would be... Something we know is entirely empty. Inside Queen Amara's sarcophagus, even now it's locked up tight. No one would find you if you hid in there. I'm told that it's temperature controlled to preserve the mummy within. But if someone dressed warmly enough, they could withstand the cold for a short time. Uh, this is sacrilege! Surely the perpetrator of such a foul deed would be cursed! But that's just it. The killer knew everyone would be too scared to open the sarcophagus. True, the guards were so scared of being cursed they wouldn't even touch it. And when the coast was clear, the killer made a quick escape from within their frigid confines. Well now, that does sound like a plausible method of evading capture. The defense requests a DNA test on the bloodstain. And then we'll see just who the real killer is. Bow your head and kneel, lawyer. So your head may be parted from your shoulders. Huh? But the trial's not even over. Whoa! How soon you forget? You're already on the headsman's scaffold. Maybe it's so hot there that Apollo's quite happy right now. He's just got a nice waft. As such, I could order your beheading at any moment. Um, all I did was request a DNA test. There is no need to request such a test. Royal Guard, bring it forth now. Here you are, your eminence. The police have already identified the source of the bloodstain. The DNA test revealed that the blood is of the traitor Dirk Sadmadi. What? But Dirk wasn't injured, so where did his blood come from? Maybe he coughed it up. Dirk's illness. Still, there was a lot of blood. Could he have really coughed up that much? And did he wipe it up to hide his failing health? Dirk, is it really that bad? Ah, oh, shoot. You got me. What? We did? It's Dirk's blood. I 
Pay attention, Horned Devil, for this case has already been solved. You claimed this bloodstain would lead us to the real killer, did you not? Um, about that. Did you or did you not make that claim of your own volition, Defense? Yes, I did. Actually, she steered you in that direction, that is. Ah, I fell right into a trap. <laughs> Do you see now the folly in opposing the very embodiment of the law? Whatever you say or do shall come to no avail. A third party at the scene of the crime? It's beyond the realm of possibility. No! Praise be for Queen Moran! The remnants of legal tactics are beyond compare! I hate to say this, but she's really got us good. The key to Amara's sarcophagus is under the protection of the royal family. My husband and I are the only ones who could open it. Therefore, it would be impossible for some knave to open it. Can I really discount the sarcophagus as a hiding place, though? What if the real killer is still in there? No, that's just ridiculous. I believe we have revels and sympathizers in the gallery today. It is to you I speak. Have you been listening? Dirk Sadmari, the one who proclaimed the bloodless revolt, has betrayed your cause by resorting to murder. No, it can't be. Dirk would never. There must be some kind of mistake. Defiant dragons and their sympathizers are starting to have doubts. So this is why Garan allows us to cross-examine Dirk. By establishing his guilt in Inga's murder, she's effectively damaged his reputation among those who support him. True, but now we have an even bigger problem. And now, filthy lawyers, you will honour your end of the bargain. Accept your guilty verdict for your failure to explain your client's actions. Ugh. Ah. Uh. Now, I shall pass judgement upon the criminal, Dirk Sadmadi. What's this? You shall pass judgment. But your eminence, is that not my role? Hold your tongue. You're but a figurehead before me, the embodiment of law. Consider yourself dismissed. As Queen of Kolain, I shall now pass judgment upon the accused. Huh? Objection! Indeed! Wait, 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 wait! You didn't even give me a chance to rebut- But <laughs> rebuttal! Rebuttal! I want my rebuttal! No, when you are defeated, lawyer. But just this once, I am willing to show you the depths of my compassion. Tell me why I should allow these proceedings to continue. Come, convince me. C quick Apollo, even if you have to bluff, we've got to keep this trial going. Show her that the crime could have been committed by a third party. How am I supposed to do that? Uh, oh, um, why don't you start with, um, how about the timing of Inga's murder? What? This whole case is built on a single premise. That Inga was murdered after Dirk entered the tomb. What if that's not true? Like, if our assumptions are all wrong? Hmm, it just might work. Well, don't keep us waiting, defense. Um, Dirk became the prime suspect because it didn't seem probable that there was a third party to see the crime. There is another question we should ask ourselves at this time. Was Mr. Inga really killed after Dirk entered the tomb? What nonsense is this? Setting aside the assumption that the murder occurred after Dirk arrived on the scene opens up the possibility of a third party committing the crime. The question before us is, when was Mr. Inga really killed? Uh, well, we kind of have to say it's completely before Dirk entered the tomb, otherwise that's just game over, right? 
Isn't it possible that before Dirk even set foot in the tomb, Minister Inga was already dead? Hmm. That would certainly make the possibility of a third party more probable. Why, of course. I fell unconscious right after I entered the tomb. Even if I hadn't, I wouldn't have had a clear line of sight to his body from the entrance. Which means... You wouldn't have noticed his body either way. This scenario is entirely possible. So we can't rule out the possibility of a third person committing the crime. I see. Well, that certainly does make sense. So far so good. This might actually work. Very well. I shall play along with whatever little game you have knocking around in that tiny mind. I was starting to get quite bored of all this. I could do with a distraction. Yes! Let us hear some testimony that will shed light on when exactly the minister was slain. Bailiff, summon Rafer. Surely she is recovered by now. But, 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 but what about me? Don't I serve a purpose anymore? Not here, you don't. I hope you are feeling better, your benevolence. Must I perform the divination sales? What? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. We merely require your testimony this time. How could my testimony be of any value? Your benevolence? Princess Rafer seems awfully depressed. After what she's been through, summoning her again is like rubbing salt in the wound. Being unable to perform the seance was probably the last straw. I hope she doesn't pass out again. Prosecutor Sadmadi, may I ask you something? Of course, Your Benevolence. I, um, I've been meaning to ask you this since yesterday. Did you know about Queen Amara? And about me? From where did you hear such a thing? From mother. And only yesterday. Rafa was carrying on about telling the truth to the people. So I told her. I told her what the truth really was. For it is up to a mother to discipline a child. I see. Be as it may, your benevolence, it has no bearing upon our trial here today. And so there is no need to let it trouble you. I know. Garan told Rafa about something other than Amara's status? Sounds like it, but what could it be? Rafer, the defense has proposed something preposterous. They somehow think your father was already dead when Dirk entered the tomb. But I believe you can prove them wrong. Are you prepared to do what is required of you? Yes, I am ready to testify. Very well then, your benevolence. And your testimony if you please. What Rafa witnessed. On the day of the murder, I was gazing upon the courtyard from my second floor veranda. Around 2.30 p.m., I saw my father heading for Amara's tomb. Then at about 2.45, I saw Barbed Head and company enter the courtyard. I saw no one go in or out of the tomb after my father entered at about 2.30. That still means someone could be in the sarcophagus. Your second floor veranda. Oh, she must be talking about that house facing Inga's private residence. So that's the location from which you saw your father, and about 2.30. Yes, and shortly after that, you people arrived at the royal residence. So after the minister entered Amara's tomb at around 2.30, no one went in or out of there until the murder was discovered. The tomb is closed to outsiders, so no one could have snuck in before the murder. That rules out any possibility of a third party lying in wait to slay my poor husband. Or so she'd like us to believe. Now hear me, you useless lawyer. Cease this charade and bow before me. For I, Queen Galan, shall finally have your head. Ah. 
Well, give me your eminence, but first let us allow the defense to question the witness. At least he's still trying to make a troll happen, even though he's being... Shunted to the sidelines a little bit. On the day of the murder, I was gazing upon the courtyard from my second floor veranda. Hold it. You say you've been watching the courtyard until we arrived, correct? It seems like an awfully long time. There is much that weighs on my mind. I see. She really does sound troubled. I don't think she ever fully recovered from the previous trial. Your benevolence. As crown princess, you are destined to rule this kingdom one day. That means there will be many things that you alone must determine. Things like how to keep your people happy, and what is true and what is false. And most importantly, what role you must play therein. I wonder if I'm even up to the task. I guess it's not easy being a princess. Um, your benevolence. I'd be happy to lend an ear if you'd ever like to talk. Hmm. What would you know of my woes? Do not presume to exceed your station in life. Sheesh. Teenagers. Your benevolence, what did you witness from your veranda? Well... Around 2.30pm I saw my father heading for Amara's tomb. Hold it! Did your father seem different or troubled in any way? Hmm, let me think. Oh, there was one unusual thing. There was. Yes, a shriek emanated from within my father's quarters. After which I witnessed him bolt outside, his countenance drained of his usual colour. He screamed and he was looking pale. What do you suppose happened? I know not. Perhaps he had a bad dream. Maybe it was a nightmare about being raked over the coals by the Queen. It seems our young lawyer here wishes to hasten his journey to the Twilight Realm. S sorry, sorry, uh, that was rude of me. Does the defense believe the witness's last statement to be important? I believe it is. I would like the witness to add it to her testimony. Oh, oh, okay. My father let out a scream and came dashing out of his room, his face pale. That's interesting. You scared of dogs, by any chance? Hmm, and why do you think he screamed? Was he surprised by someone who didn't belong there? Did anyone else come out? I, I, I didn't see anyone else. Just my father. That last statement was seriously lacking in conviction. Shall I press her on this? Press, be nice and leave it be. Press softly or press harshly. Well, we're not going to be nice and leave it be. I guess if Phoenix was doing it, we could press softly. But I don't think soft is going to work with Rafa. She always needs to be broken down. And when she's treated like a child a little bit, she does seem to at least respond. Would you say that's right? Do you think I've pegged her correctly at this point? Your benevolence. Let's have some details. The more the better. That wasn't that harsh. The details, you say? Yes. For example, are you sure you didn't see anyone in the royal residence before 2.30? I guess both pressing would have worked out the same, really. Oh, many slams. Well, is that a yes or no? Huh? Foreign devil, I've been gazing upon the courtyard since about two yesterday. Yet I saw none other than my father. Oh, if only I had stopped him then. I think you struck a nerve. Or rather, a obliterated one. Maybe I pressed a little too hard. Still, that last statement seemed a little off somehow. So you didn't see anyone except your father in the courtyard after 2pm, huh? Please add that to your testimony, your benevolence. Ooh. I had been gazing upon the courtyard since about two, but father was the only one I saw. So we're looking for a statement like that. Now we know there was a dog. Technically, we know Albie might be on the scene, right? Alright, what am I looking at? 
and around 2pm, Shadow was surprised by a firecracker, ran into the courtyard and stole Nina's hat. About to, around to, a firecracker, that's the scary thing. By the look of it, Nana was present as well. So I'd say we found ourselves our smoking gun, so to say, but let's leave the presenting to next episode. Join me then for more Spirit of Justice! As we give Rafer some hard truths, or more to the point, we get her to spill some more truths. Bye bye.